So Joe Biden has decided to bomb Syria, right? He's barely been president one month and he goes ahead and bombs Syria. So, I mean, are we surprised? No. Does it suck? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's beyond that. And, uh, you know, um, he was, we, we already knew from day one that he's going to continue stealing the oil in Syria and the Northeast. So uh, we're talking about uh, the provinces of Hasake and Deir Zor. So this is where you have uh, the largest oil uh, reserves. And, you know, they're partnering up with the Kurdish-led SDF. So we already knew that they're going to continue stealing the oil. The convoys are still going in from Iraq through the Al-Walid uh, crossing. You know, uh, he, he didn't do anything about the Caesar Act sanctions. As a matter of fact, Blinken, who's the Secretary of State now, he was already saying to, um, what's his name again? Joe, Joe Rogan or something, um, who, who works at the Washington Post, who blocked me, by the way. <laughs> he was telling him that, yeah, you know, Joe Biden uh, thinks uh, holding onto the oil is effective and the sanctions are effective and, and basically signaling before he even got elected that, yeah, he's going to keep Trump's policies, right? And I told you this was coming. I, I <laughs> How many videos have I done on this? How many times have I told you this shit? So now he, he also continues in Trump's footsteps in terms of strikes, right? So let's look at this, all right? Over here you have this, this little weasel, this little twerp, um, Kirby. Yes, that's his name. Um, he, he actually gave the, uh, the announcement. And you can, you can see his picture over here, right? So the headline is from Arab News. It reads, U.S. bombs facilities in Syria used by Iran-backed militia. Okay? Wow, that, that, like I've not heard that a million times before. Let me read you his statement. Okay, I want to read you the official statement. He says that at President Biden's discretion, uh, sorry, at President Biden's direction, U.S. military forces earlier this evening conducted airstrikes against infrastructure utilized by Iranian-backed uh, militant groups in eastern Syria. These strikes were authorized in response to recent attacks against American and coalition personnel in Iraq and to ongoing threats to those personnel. Specifically... The strikes destroyed multiple facilities located at a border control point used by a number of Iranian-backed militant groups, um, including Qatar, uh, Hezbollah. And so he's talking about the Hajj al-Shabi, right? So just, just to give you context, uh, when we talk about, um, when they're talking about Iran, you know, Iranian-backed militant groups, they're talking about the popular mobilization forces or the popular mobilization units, right? So this is, this is the Hajj al-Shabi. And... There, there's, you know, they, they say, oh, these are the Iranian proxies. Um, first of all, they're not, they, you know, they say, they're, oh, they're, these are just Shiite proxies. That's not true, first of all. They're made up of Shiites, Sunnis, Christians. You know, it, it's, a, it's a national defense force that is resisting the illegal military occupation by the United States and other coalition troops. So, they, you know, but of course, you, you, they're, they're not going to tell you that, right? Because if they, tell, if they talk about a resistance, what does, that, what does that mean? They're resisting an occupation and they can't portray themselves as occupiers because that goes against the whole narrative, right? No, the United States is there, you know, to, to promote democracy. They're not occupiers. They can't have you believing that. So, of course, they refer to them as Iranian-backed proxies, right? That's how they have to refer to them. So, to, just to translate the bullshit for you. So, th this proportionate, <laughs> proportionate military response. Yes, yes, absolutely, right? Uh, I, I also find that an airstrike is a proportionate response to a rocket attack that has hurt no one. Yes, absolutely proportionate. <laughs> this proportionate military response was conducted together with diplomatic measures, including consultation with coalition partners. N notice, notice how when he says diplomatic measures, he says, he says um, with coalition partners, okay? Because usually when you, when you say you've engaged in diplomatic endeavors, that means you've, you've talked to your enemy, right? Or you've talked to your adversary, or you've tried to meet, you've tried to perhaps get someone to mediate, in this case, perhaps Russia, right? Who knows? You would get someone to, to help you mediate. That's engaging in diplomacy, not going to your allies and be like, hey, should we bomb Syria? Oh, yeah, let's go bomb Syria. No, that's not diplomacy, okay? That, that's conspiring to commit war, uh, act, acts of, uh, of aggression and war. So the operation sends an unambiguous message President Biden will act to protect American and coalition personnel. At the same time, we have acted in a deliberate manner that aims to de-escalate the overall situation in both Eastern Syria and Iraq. Yes, I, I love it. I love it when you de-escalate the situation with airstrikes. That, that seems like the rational thing to do when you want to de-escalate, right? You go and bomb someone, like fucking for virginity, right? Bombing for peace. 
Yes, that's how you de-escalate situations. This is diplomacy. Let's bomb the shit out of other people. <laughs> I mean, no, nothing changes, right? You go back, you look at the Nixon administration, it's the same thing. Like, yeah, linebacker one, linebacker two, come on, just send 100 B-52s, bomb the shit out of Vietnam, and we'll call, we'll call that diplomacy. Wow. Wow. So, this is the official statement, right? And just to give you some context where this is on the map, right? So, he didn't say it in the statement, but uh, the... Area is talking about is um, Al Bukamen. So this is on the uh, the border over here. You can see that. Yeah. Okay. We got a couple of sheep on the side. <laughs> don't don't mind them. They're just chilling. All right. The sheep. They're good guys. They're just chilling. This is the area we're talking about here. Al Bukamen. You see, this is on the border between Syria and Iraq. And uh, if you if you look at the um, the uh, the piece from I think it was um, ABC News, right? So. This was really funny, how, how, what they said in their article. Um, they said over here that... Yeah, at President... Um, sorry, so, so they, they said over here that um, another official described the airstrike as targeting a location through which both groups engaged in smuggling into Iraq. <laughs> This this is so hilarious because if you just go up uh, um, if you just go further up the border between Iraq and Syria and and you look at the El Walid crossing right the El Walid border crossing that that is literally where the United States smuggles oil out of Syria and uh, smuggles convoys into Syria illegally right so you, you you've seen Trump do that right you've seen Biden do that there's no difference. They, and so they, they have the gall, they have the stones to talk about illegal smuggling. You're literally stealing the fucking oil. That's the definition of smuggling. You're pirates. <laughs> this is hilarious, honestly. So anyway, we're get, I, I don't want to get too sidetracked about that, but it's just there's so much hypocrisy. Like you can't read one sentence without finding, you know, um, tantam uh, uh, um, just enormous amounts of bullshit, uh, tantamount to fucking war crimes. So... There, I, I just want to, I want you to understand something here, right? Because when the United States talks about we're bombing Iranian proxies, as they're saying here, or when they talk about uh, striking Iranian uh, infrastructure inside of Syria, you know what, the, you know what this, this is? This is Israel, okay? This is the exact same excuse that Israel uses all the time to bomb Syria, right? So most of the time they won't even acknowledge it, but they have acknowledged that they've carried out hundreds of airstrikes. They don't even care. They've just taken advantage of the war. The fact that Syria is, you know, in, in, in tatters because of this war um, since 2011. So they just go in every week and they bomb them. And you, you, I'm not exaggerating. Like, it's almost, ver it's almost verbatim what happens. And ju just to give you some, some context, I mean, look at this. I have just a couple of headlines over here, right? This is from 13th of January. Suspected Israeli strikes on Iran-linked targets kill dozens. Israel, this is from November 2019. Israel strikes Iranian targets in Syria after rocket attack. <laughs> okay, and this is another one from the Washington Post. Israel strikes Iranian targets in Syria in retaliation for planting uh, of explosives on border. This is from uh, November 2020. I mean, it, it's always the same excuse, right? They're always going to say this. Oh, look, it, it, we're striking Iranian targets. This doesn't even make any sense, right? It, because you need to understand what they're trying to brainwash you with. Um... You know, Syria and Iran are sovereign countries. They're allowed to have an alliance. They're allowed to cooperate with each other, right? They're virtually neighbors. If Iran has uh, troops, if Iran has a base, if Iran has uh, a partnership or an alliance with Syria, that's Syria and Iran's business, right? Now, you can, you know, you can disagree with it or not. Or you can disagree with it or agree with it. But it's Syria and Iran's business. What the fuck is the United States on the other side of the globe doing sticking its nose in Iran and Syria's business. They're doing it for Israel. That's what it's about, right? So Israel, you know, they, they must be extremely happy at this. They must be extremely happy with what's going on here, right? And just, I mean, just try to think of it this way. Can you imagine if, for example, you know, the United States has 800 military bases spread out across the globe. You know, if, if you're from the UK, you probably know Newquay, right? This is, um, it's now an airport. It used to be a, a bomber base. <laughs> All the way in Devon and Cornwall, New UK, they used to have nuclear bombers there. So, you know, the United States has, has bases everywhere. They have bases in Germany, Korea, you name it. 
it, could, could you imagine if Syria bombed Korea, for example, because they have a U.S. base there? You would be, you would be like, what the hell is that? Okay, so why, why is it okay for the United States to bomb Syria because Iran has, uh, uh, you know, allegedly militias in there that they don't like? What kind of logic is that? It's none of your fucking business. The, Iran and Syria are not part of your territory. You don't get to decide what they can do with their own land and their own armies and their own alliances and partnerships. Who the fuck asks you? Oh, I know, Israel. So, <laughs> I mean, Israel is besides the point here, really. This is just, uh, you know, um, it's just strikingly similar, you know, no pun intended, to, to what we always see. And, you know, they're saying here that uh, in the media, they're saying that this is in response to um, two things, right? They're saying it's in response to uh, um, an attack on personnel on February 15th. Okay. Well, let me pull this up for you. So they're saying the airstrike was in this is from ABC News. The, the airstrike was in retaliation for a February 15th rocket attack against a U.S. base in the northern Iraqi city of Erbil that killed a coalition contractor and left several American contractors and a U.S. military service member wounded. Okay, they're also saying they're also saying that this is because of um, what happened in the green zone, right? So uh, the green zone. This is uh, in Baghdad in Iraq. You have the U.S. Embassy. I mean, man, I need to pull up a picture. You're not going to understand how, what, I'm, what I'm talking about here. The U.S. Embassy in Baghdad is, is I'm not kidding. I'm not saying this is hyperbole. It's, it's almost the size of Vatican City, okay? This is how big it is. I just want to show you a picture. It's, it's a military installation. To call it an embassy is kind of a joke, right? Embassies don't look like that, usually. That, that's a fucking military base, okay? This thing is enormous. It's ridiculous. It's an entire compound, right? It's it's a it's its own city. So, you know th this this thing. I mean, obviously, you shouldn't be firing rockets at, a, at an embassy, regardless. But the the rockets on on the green zone are nothing new. Okay, so so my point here is that for them to say like this is something brand new, which warranted some kind of response, is nonsense. Moreover, Baghdad is not in Syria, at least not in the twenty first century. <laughs> okay, moreover. Um, what the fuck are you doing in Iraq still? I mean, why do you have contractors in Iraq? Why do you have military personnel in Iraq? Why, why are you still occupying this country in 2021? What the fuck are you doing there? What are you doing in Iraq? Who gave you the right to occupy Iraq? Like this point is not even addressed. It's like they depart from the point like, yeah, we are in Iraq and we want to defend ourselves. What, what, what? Defend yourselves from what? You're the fucking occupiers. You're the invaders. You're there illegally. You have no fucking right to be in the country to begin with, you motherfuckers. You invaded it. You destroyed it. You are the offenders. You, ha you, you can't talk about defense. You're not the victims here, you motherfuckers. But no one even talks about this. It's just like accepted. Oh yeah, the United States is the victim. Someone, sh someone fired a rocket that killed no one. And they thought it, they thought it went at the, at the embassy, right? And so therefore they had to go and strike Syria. What the fuck does Syria have to do with it? Oh, no, no, you see, you don't understand. It's because Iran, they have these proxies everywhere, you know? And it's, it's, just, it's just a fucking salad, right? It's just the go-to excuse. It's the go-to excuse. Iran, 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 let's go bomb Syria. Iran, 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 let's go to, go to this. Always. It's unbelievable. And people just swallow this, right? They just don't care. You know what's, you know what's um, amazing to me? You know what's amazing to me? That Joe Biden has, still hasn't given you any of those checks. Have any of you gotten your checks? I know you fucking haven't. Have you, have you gotten the 1,400? Let's, let's forget about the 2,000. That's gone, man. Forget, it's, you're never seeing that shit, unfortunately. The 1,400, have you seen it? I, I might have a clue where it is. I might have a clue where it is. I'll show you. Okay, bear with me. I think I know where your relief checks go, went, guys. Take a look. I think, this is just a hunch, I think they might be over here somewhere in a field in Syria with the sheep in the form of shrapnel, right? This is courtesy of Raytheon. This is courtesy of the military-industrial complex. So your checks are somewhere over here <laughs> in a field. They're, 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 they've been turned into dust and shrapnel. That, that's where your checks are. Okay, that's what Joe Biden thinks of you. So, you know, can't, can't do the $15 minimum wage. Nope. No, can't do that. Can't get you the $2,000 checks. No, that's $1,400 now. And, you know, we don't know where it is. 
It's coming. It's coming. Mid March, maybe or something. It's coming. Be quiet. No, we, we, we can't do, um, you know, we can't cancel any student loan. We'll have a little moratorium, you know, on evictions and, and student loan debt payments until September. But that's it. You know, we can't cancel anything. Above 10K, are you crazy? No, 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 no way. We, we can't do anything. We just can't do it. Bombing Syria? The fuck yeah, let's go, man. Let's go. What are you talking about? Yalla, yalla, I'm sure. <laughs> I just want to say on behalf of all Syrians to Joe Biden, so this is incredible and I'm, I'm, I'm 100% sure tomorrow morning tomorrow morning you're going to see the squad you're going to see AOC and Ilhan Omar and Jamal Bowman they're going to come out scowling they're going to come out scowling and they're going to condemn Joe Biden right they're going to call for his impeachment right because when a president goes to war with another country, they're already at war, right? When you're already in the country and you've got troops stealing oil, you're already at war. Nonetheless, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to just focus on the airstrike. We're going to pretend it, it... When a president goes to war without going to Congress first, right? When he, he violates the oath um, of his office, he abuses his power, right? Just as Trump did. That's, that's extremely egregious. That's an extreme affront on the Constitution, right? On the separation of powers. Th this is unacceptable. Did Joe Biden go before Congress and ask if he could bomb Syria? Again, I, I've told you this many times before. I don't care if Congress agrees with Joe Biden or not, because that still doesn't mean that he can bomb Syria, right? Just because the U.S. Congress decides something does not make it universal law. Nonetheless, just in the context of U.S. law, did he consult with Congress? No. So what does he do? On, on what basis is he bombing Syria? I'm, I can't wait for AOC to call him out, right? I can't wait. I can't wait for, the, for a War Powers Act to limit his ability, right? They tried that with Trump after Soleimani. They tried that. Didn't work, unfortunately. Um, but you know, the White House spokesperson, uh, Jen Psaki, she had something interesting to say, actually, in 2017. Right? I, found, I found a, a really um, succinct tweet she says what is the legal authority for strikes Assad is a brutal dictator but Syria is a sovereign country oh Jen thank you so much I'm glad that we see eye to eye I can't wait for Jen tomorrow morning to reaffirm the fact that Syria is a sovereign country right I can't wait for her to uh, publicly disavow and condemn Joe Biden's decision to bomb Syria, a sovereign country. And of course, this has, you know, this has no uh, legal basis, whether in terms of U.S. law or international law. Remember, this is a complete absolute violation of the United Nations Charter. You do not have the right to just go and bomb other uh, countries and UN member states because you feel like it or because you think that um, there is some kind of impending threat, right? Again, Bush doctrine. Oh, we, we have to attack them before they attack us. This, was a, this wasn't even that. This was a retaliatory thing. They're saying it. They're, they're not even using the Bush doctrine here. They're just saying, yeah, this is payback. Allegedly, right? It's payback. You can't do that. You're not allowed to do that. I can't wait for her to, to, to condemn Biden, right? I can't wait for the squad to come out and publicly scrutinize Biden. Oh, they're going to do such a good job, man. They are going to slice him and dice him. You know it just do it. <laughs> Oh my God, they're not going to say shit. They're not going to do shit, man. You know, I, I'm, again, I'm just going to double check because I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. But when I, when I saw uh, that Joe Biden had just bombed Syria, Ilhan Omar, what Ilhan Omar did, yeah, she, she's still not talking about it. Yeah, so this is Ilhan Omar's Twitter, right? Again, I, I'm pretty sure that she runs her own Twitter account, right? I'm, I'm hoping at least because... Um, that would be very concerning. So this is what she had to say, okay, so far. This is Ilhan Omar, all right? Um, so she's talking, she's saying progressives are often told to fall in line. It's time to tell moderates to fall in line. Okay, I, I don't even know what, what, what she's talking about. Um, now she's talking about Republicans, and she's talking about the filibuster. No mention of Syria. You, you just bombed another country. You just bombed another country. Wake the fuck up. 
You just bombed another country. What is this? What is that? <laughs> I mean, she, she's incompetent at best, and she's covering for Biden at worst, and I think we all know it's the latter, right? Not a word. I haven't seen anything, right? I mean, if, there, if, if there's one thing, if there's one event, right, that would prompt an urgent response, it would be going to war, right? It would be bombing another country. You would immediately have everyone go, yo, what the fuck? Holy shit, you just bombed another country? What are you doing? What is wrong with you? Especially his Congress people, right? He, he's essentially violating the separation of powers here. He did not go before them and plead his case. He just fucking went and did it. And of course, you know where this, this stems from, right? All of this, right, comes from the, the, the uh, AUMF, right? The Authorization for Use of Military Force. And if you go and look at the picture of George Bush signing that shit, Joe Biden is standing right behind the motherfucker. Right. Because he, he essentially helped to get he, he helped uh, George Bush build the case for the Iraq war. Again, it was still illegal. It doesn't matter what the U.S. Congress thinks. It's still illegal. But nonetheless, they've been using the AOMF from 2001 and 2003 to justify legally inside the United States all of the subsequent military actions that they take. Any drone strike, any airstrike, any <laughs> encroachment. I love that word, right? <laughs> Obama used it, a mild encroachment, right? Um, any kind of violation. That's what they've been using. Oh, we're fighting terrorism. It's the war on terror, right? Again, it's just like the war on drugs. It's just like they, they just create a boogeyman. They create a little legal framework for them to operate within, and they just go fucking wild. They will take something illegal and make it legal and do whatever the fuck they want, and no one's going to stop them. So... This is astonishing, man. This is frankly astonishing. I mean, again, I'm not surprised, but my heart sank. Um, it's, not, it's not particularly nice when, when you see your country being bombed. I mean, last time, again, I don't have any family in this particular area, but last time Donald Trump uh, bombed Syria, um, you know, in 2018, this is, of course, if you're not, gonna, if you're not going to include uh, the, the rest of the U.S. covert uh, operations. But when the U.S., the U.K., and France bombed uh, Syria in 2018 in April, um, was it April 12th, I think? They, they bombed um, Damascus, right? And so I remember calling up my cousins, trying to see if they're okay. And, and yeah, that's... So, anyway. Um, yeah, it, it's really upsetting. It's really upsetting. I, I told hey, I told you, look. <laughs> I, t I told you, man. <laughs> you you guys thought this was satire, right? This is not satire. Uncle Uncle Joe's Rainbow Coalition Death Cult. It's real. It's real. I, I told you. I told you. You see? I told you this was coming. I fucking warned you, man. I'm, i for, I've been telling you this for the last year. I've been telling you this for the last year. And all these people have been, and even in progressive media, they've been talking about, oh my God, Joe Biden, he's the lesser of two evils. He's going to be shitty, but not as bad as Trump. Well, how is he not as bad as Trump? This is exactly the same as Trump. He's keeping sanctions on Syria, right? Brutal sanctions that are starving civilians, that have crippled the economy, that have destroyed the lira, the Syrian pound. He's continuing to steal the oil in northeastern Syria, Right. Now he's bombing Syria just like Trump. Literally no fucking difference. How can you sit there and tell me that Joe Biden is the lesser of two evils? It's the exact same evil. He's still sanctioning Iran. He still hasn't gotten back into the JCPOA, into the Iran nuclear deal. The kids are still in cages. The kids are still in the goddamn cages. They just have air conditioning now and, and you know, fancier uh, containers to put them in. They're still cages. You haven't gotten your stimulus check. He scammed you. He's not going to give you a $15 minimum wage. You're not even going to see any uh, sub substantial um, student loan cancellation. Nothing. How can you sit there as a rational adult and tell me that this guy is any better? It's the same brand of scum. But it's okay. You know why? Because it's diverse. I'm so, dude, let me tell you, as a Syrian, let me tell you, as a Syrian, I'm so happy that a black man leading the pentagon just bombed my country that makes me so much like it makes me warm and fuzzy inside right i'm so glad that you also have avril haynes a woman who's the director of national intelligence also leading these imperialist endeavors right i'm so happy that kamala harris right 
is the VP. And she's also partaking in these imperialist conquests. I'm so happy, man. It makes me so happy. Now I don't, I don't have to worry, right? I'm so glad that your relief checks, your $1,400, which should have been $2,000, are now just, you know, turned into dust and shrapnel and used to, you know, uh, further shit on the Middle East. Isn't that great? I think we're both getting a great deal out of this, don't you think? Me as a Syrian, you know, you guys as Americans, I think we're getting a great deal out of, out of this thing. Everything is fine. It's nice and dandy. It's okay, right? Because Donald Trump is gone. The orange shooter man is gone. Now we, we can have pink bombs. We can have, you know, um, rainbow colored drones, right? Here we go again. Uncle Joe's Rainbow Coalition death cult. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Shh. Go back to brunch. Everything is okay. <laughs> the kids are still in cages. You're right. You're not going to get your student debt canceled. You're not going to get a $15 minimum wage. You can go and fuck yourself. The prison industrial complex is going to continue. The war machine is going to continue. Biden is going to keep sanctioning Syria, keep sanctioning Venezuela, keep sanctioning Iran. He's going to keep stealing Syria's oil. He's going to sell off Iran's oil like a, like a literal pirate, just, you know, stealing oil off of ships and selling it off. Everything the same. Continue all of Trump's policies, doing all these favors for Israel, continuing to illegally recognize the occupied Syrian Golan Heights as Israeli, Jerusalem as the capital, violating UN, Secu UN Security Council resolutions. It's fine. Just go back to brunch. Everything is OK, man. Thank God the cabinet is diverse. I'm so happy that a rainbow cabinet just bombed my country. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Liberals, thank you. Wow. You know, you want to talk about diversity? There's nothing diverse about Joe Biden's cabinet, right? There's nothing diverse whatsoever. These people could not be more, they could not be more in harmony with the last bunch of scum that just left. They're continuing the exact same policies. It's all a continuation. Every administration continues the same shit. You know, they, they cater to corporations. They screw over the working class. They keep the wars going. It's the same old, same old, same old. Nothing changes. But, but hey, the bombs are pink, so don't complain. Otherwise, you're a sexist. Be happy that the VP is a woman. <laughs> Go and fuck yourselves. Go and fuck yourselves, man. Khraya alaykum. Khraya alaykum.